Well, I think it reflected very much the failure of governance. The directors and non-executive directors of financial institutions have obligations to their shareholders and stakeholders to ensure that the businesses are run well and that the risks which the businesses are taking are understood. Were the complicated instruments like mortgage-backed securities, asset-backed securities, covered bonds and the derivatives associated with them really understood by those who were managing those institutions and had responsibility for the risks which were being taken? I think not. Whilst financial institutions do have various uh, methods to analyse and measure the risks which they're taking, the question which arises from the current financial crisis is whether they looked at the risks at a higher level, whether the overall business risks being run by the banks and other financial institutions were fully appreciated. Possibly some of the risks were looked at in detail, but the wider issues about the banking models which were being used uh, were not fully understood. There need to be some radical changes to, to regulation and governance within financial institutions. I think we all know that. I would advocate that all non-executive directors have to sit an exam on financial issues and on risk management. And if they don't pass that exam, then they're not allowed to sit on the boards of those financial institutions. I would also advocate that each and every dealer in the Treasury Department of Financial Institutions should not be allowed a mandate to deal in any instrument until they have a proper Treasury qualification. What does the current crisis tell us about agency theory? Um, the ability of the owners of banks and their shareholders to control effectively the activities of their agents, the bank's management. Uh, were the shareholders really alive to the complex financial risks being run by the banks they were invested in? Was their vigilance undermined by the experience until 2007 of, experience, of experiencing healthy profits and dividends as a result of the actions by the banks? Is the practice of rewarding bank executives mainly in bonuses rather than in base salaries bound to lead to those executives taking high risks with the bank's capital in order to generate high bonus payments? If you have bonuses, they should be linked to the long-term relative share performance uh, of the shares issued by your bank uh, and that there should be uh, more remuneration in terms of base salary as opposed to bonus. Uh, bonus is just have just been used as a one-way bet by uh, um, by those in senior positions within banks. You take bets with the bank's capital. If you win, you go home with the money in the pocket. If you don't win, then okay, you don't get a bonus, but nothing worse than that. But remember that uh, the major culprits in the current financial crisis are the banks uh, and not converted building societies. And if you look at the position which Lloyd's is in, Royal Bank of Scotland, uh, HBOS which obviously comprises Bank of Scotland, when you're not just talking about converted building societies having got themselves into a bit of a pickle, you're talking about some of the largest banks within the UK and within Europe having fallen foul of the uh, financial risks which they were taking. Certainly all the building societies that converted to banks have now one way or another gone. And one way or another, and they did it in different ways, they had, uh, they, they, their demise was linked to flawed business models. Um, but remember that some of the uh, largest uh, culprits in the current financial crisis are and have been banks for uh, many centuries. Mm -hmm.